Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for Modern Survivalist and in this case I'm going to explain how to check and verify a uh, used revolver before either purchasing it or using it and just making sure you're getting a good deal and you're not getting fooled with a revolver that is in poor condition. Now this is important because as we've been talking with Matt Bracken the last few weekends in our in our weekly uh, live streams, this social situation in the US sites in the United States and many parts of the world is just keep it keeps getting worse and more complicated. That uh, gap of, of time so as to prepare is just getting closer and smaller and smaller and if you don't have this sorted out, you just want to do something about it. In terms of firearms, a lot of, pe of you folks have guns already and know how to use them, but many of you don't. And if that's the case, a good revolver is without a doubt your best bet given the limited amount of time you already have. Now even if you have guns and you know how to use your Glock or your AR and and you're well set, keep in mind that there may be other people around you that are not as well versed with guns. Uh, revolver is a great gun for someone that you trust enough so as to give them a firearm but has very limited training in terms of, of firearms. This is the kind of gun you can give to a person that you've just explained the basics and a few essentials in terms of marksmanship and that guy can have your back with a gun that is appropriate uh, for his skill level. All right. Again, if you don't have a gun, a revolver is the one you want to get right now so as to not overcomplicate things. Folks, uh, Glocks, pistols, the, the, fantastic. I shoot Glock almost exclusively, but I know that comes along with a level of training that's acquired over the years. Muscle memory, all of this which will be greatly impaired in high stress uh, moments where your fine motor skills are, are impaired and you're just almost like working on instincts. Uh, that is not the kind of thing the average person will do unless he spent hours and hours and hours throughout years training with that kind of firearm. This is a lot more, um, it's a lot more adequate for that kind of person. You just check that the gun is loaded, fires, the revolver is loaded, you pull the trigger, the gun fires. You don't have 15, 16, 18 rounds, but you have six and you have those for sure, which is always a lot better than that empty chamber in your pistol, that safety that you forgot about, or whatever. Okay, so having said all that, let's get to the video. What is it that you should be checking? Well, first of all, make sure the gun is of course empty. We're going to be making a, a few, taking a few steps that can be very dangerous if the gun is of course loaded. So that's the first thing you check. Then you want to make sure what kind of gun you have, um, so as to know what to look for. There's a, a couple little differences depending on the model, and this is probably the, the worst two guns. So as to explain the, this, because there are maybe some of the two more rare, less common type of guns. Most people don't have a, a called Python, and we're, and you're kind of not likely to go out looking right now for one and the Manuron MR73 is even more rare than the Python so yeah but having said that the MR73 is based on the Smith & Wesson it's kind of like an upgraded Smith & Wesson in terms of its mechanical uh, function and, uh, and design internal design and such so it's going to be helping me out for this demonstration so first thing you're going to be open it making sure that the gun is empty you're going to be checking that it's the um, the the cylinder is rotating properly that's you know it could be needing a little bit of oil but you want to see this rotate nicely and you want to check the ejector to see that it's not bent that's not catching or stuck or anything sometimes they these i've seen this many times in gun stores they are a little bit unscrewed and they're not like working properly or you have problems in terms of opening it because it's unscrewed and a bit longer here and it's very difficult to open i've seen this in many towers revolvers uh, you know, but it can happen in pretty much any revolver because it just gets a little bit unscrewed and it's just too tight and you may have a hard time opening. One of the things you want to check is general condition of the gun. What I mean by that is look for any hairline cracks, anything that's out of the ordinary in the frame, any little crack. It may be very hard to see, but it's just going to be like a tiny hairline crack along the frame. In, in the cylinder, 
you know, check each chamber that you don't see any cracks anywhere in the gun. Then you're gonna be looking for any bulge that are a little bit suspicious. This may happen with just an overloaded uh, reload or just a, a, a bad round or whatever. Um, maybe a, a round got stuck in the barrel and just pull the trigger and shot another one and just left a, a, a bulge in the barrel. You just don't wanna have that. So make sure you don't see any weird bulges or deformations in the cylinder or in the barrel. Then typically you will want to check that bore to see that it's in good shape and what you want to look here is like a mirror finish the glass looking interior and sometimes you can do this even with a natural light with your nail a little trick you pick over the years so you want to have that mirror finish and nice cut bore yeah if it's a little bit of an older gun it, there is, it may be a little bit more worn those lines may not be as clean or they may, may be even a little bit of pitting i had revolvers that had a little bit of a pit barrel just a, a couple spots there and it was no big deal the gun just shot fine but ideally you want a clean bore as as mirror looking at as possible and the same thing for those chambers you want to check those and see that there's no deformations if it's uh, um, a little bit dirty uh, up front that's uh, that's okay that's normal and even more so if 38s were shot in a 357 even more so you may even have problems uh, inserting a 357 magnum if a lot of 38 was shot because it's dirty not because there's anything wrong with the gun the gun just needs a good cleaning and then you will be able to place those 357s nicely without any problem just keep in mind that being shorter it's going to be more residue and maybe a little bit more uh, harder to take those out all right you want to make sure you don't have much play anywhere you know um around the gun it has to be pretty tight and once you close it yeah a minimal amount of play here is is okay that's perfectly fine it's the cylinder stop in place you don't want this loose rotating and very uh, forward and backward movement that is a big no-no if that's happening the gun is going to be rattling itself to pieces in no time so that's something you want to avoid and then you want to put it in full lockdown which should be pulling the trigger on the gun and keeping it pressed like that and then you verify that yeah this is very very tight but this is understandable because this, this is a very high quality revolver so there's kind of like no play whatsoever as, as long as i keep the fingerprints there just doesn't move in any direction um it is completely natural that in a, in a Smith & Wesson, a little bit uh, of play there, it, it's okay. Now, in a, in a Colt revolver, that is not okay. When you pull the trigger and keep it down like that, there has to be nothing, no movement whatsoever of any kind. If there is even minimal movement, that gun is already wearing itself and it needs to be serviced. Now, people that don't know this about Colt revolvers and they're used to Smith & Wessons, they think, oh man, that is super tight. Look, it just has barely any, any movement. No, if it has any movement at all, that gun needs to be serviced right now. You shouldn't be putting a couple thousand rounds through it. That's when the gun starts falling apart. That's when people start bad-mouthing pythons because they think that it's a crappy revolver no you just didn't understand that the gun needs to be serviced at that point which is different from what happens with a smith and wesson where that little bit of play is still okay it's perfectly fine and you can put a few more thousand rounds through it and and, and so on without problems not the case when you see that because the kind of a uh, locking mechanism that you have in a cult is is different from a smith and wesson in the cult the mechanism is so that when you keep it pressed like this it is firmly kept in place if it's not it's already worn out okay so uh, a nice little trick to keep in mind is with a little bit of pressure with your finger work that action just don't overdo it just a little bit of pressure so as to check that it's not worn and it has you know, proper surfaces making contact and nothing is, is out of place. When you cock the hammer, you wanna see that the firing pin, if you have it there, it's not mounted in the frame, that's in good condition, not broken, not chipped, and a little bit of pressure forward. It should stay in place. If this is worn or someone did a crappy uh, polishing job of the, 
of the internals, then it may come loose when you put a little bit of pressure. If not, it should just stay in place. This should be rock solid, but just don't overdo it. A little bit of pressure will be enough so as to check, right? Then you wanna check then, pull it back, keep the trigger down, and you wanna see that firing pin protruding there on the side. This will happen even if it's mounted on the frame, like in the case of the Colt. And that means that the gun you know, the firing pin is going to be hitting the, the primer there and it's going to be firing. As soon as I release a trigger, that goes back and stays there even if I push forward. You can also check that gap and it's, as you see here, it's just a hairline. You want that to be very minimal. That gap, if it starts getting any bigger, you could put like a, a card uh, through that. That is, again, big no-no. That has to be a minimal gap. You should see a gap there. That gap has to be there because it shouldn't be making contact with the forcing cone. The cylinder shouldn't be making contact there, but it has to be very tiny. There's actually ga a gauges to, so to check that, but just make sure it's a hairline and not much bigger than that. In the case of, of the Colt, you will see nothing at all once you keep that pushed in. When you keep the trigger like that, it's being forced. The cylinder is forced against the barrel and there's nothing. There's, there's no gap there whatsoever when, when you keep it pressed like that. All right. So yeah, those, those are basically some of the steps you, you want to check. Check that there's no cracks in the, the forcing cone as well. The forcing cone should be nice and clean without any you know, cracks or uh, unusual wear. If that cylinder gap is a little bit too big, you'll see a fire cut there in the frame. The gas is going to be coming out like that. It's going to be cutting. That is a revolver that's been shot a lot or that has a, a bigger gap. It's going to be cutting the frame through that and you see it like, like blasts it in that spot you don't want to see that in your revolver okay what else we we cover most of it yeah you're going to be working that action on each one you want to see that drop on each one it should the cylinder stop should be in place for each each chamber and the same thing should be seen in your Colt revolvers and you want to see make sure that it drops completely before it starts rotating that falls in place this is a beautiful firearm but you see that go down all the way before it starts rotate, rotating it should not rotate at all until it reaches that point where it's out of the way and that speaks to the timing of the firearm. Now, as soon as you start pushing, putting a little bit of, of pressure in that hammer, you have to see movement from that stop. It should start going down right away. If you do even minimal movement and you don't see that stop move down, then again, the gun is, is pre-worn in its parts and it needs to be addressed. Then finally, you want to check the alignment of each chamber with a barrel and you do that by pulling it back on each one and verifying this is kind of dangerous, so make sure the gun is definitely unloaded and you want to put a little bit of light in there and you don't want to see any uh, half moon or nail clip a dark sh a shadow on either side. You want to see a very much aligned chamber and barrel like you're seeing right now and you want to see that for each chamber. Can you even put the light back there? And that's what you want to see for each chamber that you're checking. All right. If there's any shadow on the sides, you know, if it's like a half moon or like a, a nail clip shadow on either side, that means it's not aligned properly. You don't want to see that. Depending on the light that you have, you can even put the light through the, the firing pin hole there. And that's exactly what you want to see, right? Make sure the back plate is also in nice shape and that hole is not, you know, cracked or there's any you know, a little bit of wear like this, you know, uh, it's not so much wear, like it's the, the mark of, of the, you know, of the, of the case uh, going against that plate. But you want this plate to be nice, clean, that it's, it's not worn at all. And that hole is nicely cut without any chipping or any deformations of any kind, all right? So guys, basically those are the things you want to check and verify when buying a revolver so as to make sure it's in good shape. Finally, if you, and check with the owner of the 
revolver or the gun store owner before actually doing that. But if you have dummy rounds, even better, you want to check the double action mechanism in the revolver. Better do it with dummy rounds if he has a few, ask for those. It's a little bit more serious and respectful. You can't do it with the empty gun like that, like I just did, but some people are, are a little bit more self-conscious about that and they don't like people doing that. At the very least, ask for permission before doing it, but that's a way in which you will verify that indeed the gun is working correctly in double action as well and not just verifying the, the single action mechanism, which we already did. Then, if there's a little bit of holster wear, that's perfectly fine, reasonable for most guns carried by police but shot actually very little, which is usually the case with, with uh, service guns. They've been carried a lot and not shot all that much in general, so that's the way in which you sometimes get pretty nice deals. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Keep in mind my books regarding how to prepare for what's coming, Street Survival Skills and the Modern Survival Manual, Surviving the Economic Collapse based on my first-hand experience in Argentina and this one is also pretty useful and has a valuable skills for you now. Links are going to be available there below. Have an awesome day. See you in our next video.